the plan chat for today's stream is, I guess, kind of twofold. The first thing that I want to do is something uh, that I have talked about a couple of times in previous streams, and that is uh, that I would like to finally use the cardboard box, which is now actually craftable. This wasn't craftable in older versions of the pack, but as of the newest update, uh, this is now makeable. And the cardboard box, if uh, for those who don't know, allows you to move blocks from place to place. You can right click on basically any block with a cardboard box, and then you can pick the cardboard box up and move it and put it down somewhere else, which for certain blocks makes no sense, right? Dirt, stone, anything like that. But uh, for example, if you had a chest full of stuff, you could put a cardboard box over that chest, pick it up, move it, put it back down, take the cardboard box off, and it would still have everything inside of that chest. You don't have to empty it all out. You don't have to have items spewing everywhere. It works pretty well. The other benefit, and the one that we're going to take advantage of, is the fact that the cardboard box can be used to move the mob spawners from, in our case, the nether, to the overworld. We're going to go to the nether. We're going to find one of our blaze spawners. We're going to put down the cardboard box. We're going to pick it up. We're going to bring it home. And we're going to set up an automatic blaze killing system that will hopefully give us basically infinite blaze rods and a blaze powder going forward, uh, which are going to be super useful for making eyes of ender. We need to make quite a lot of those ender cores from the uh, energizing, well, with the energizing orb over here. Uh, we have quite a lot of recipes that require blaze, uh, blaze rods and blaze powder. And so I think getting that uh, set up sooner rather than later would be, uh, would be pretty useful. So uh, to make it, we actually only need a, a stone machine frame and then some sawdust. The sawdust does require a, uh, a precision sawmill. You can also craft down a block of wood, but the block of wood is made with sawdust. So that seems entirely uh, unhelpful. Uh, thankfully, I don't think it's going to take us too long to get a, a precision sawmill here. Uh, so long as we have what it takes to make a steel casing, we do indeed. Fantastic. And so in that case, let's quickly go ahead and do something like this. I won't bother upgrading this to a factory because I really don't think we're going to be using it uh, too, too much. I do believe that if we wanted to, we could use this uh, to get more than four planks out of each log. I believe that is like the way this works. And it's kind of primary purpose is to get, uh, I believe, six planks for every one log. Yeah, you can get six planks for every log and you have a 25% chance of, of getting sawdust. Now, given that we need eight sawdust, we're probably going to have to put quite a lot of our logs through this. And if we're going to do that, chat, it kind of feels like we might as well temporarily steal some of these speed and energy upgrades and make this guy nice and fast. Like that. That will hopefully get us the, uh, the eight sawdust fairly quickly. While we wait for that, the uh, stone machine frame here requires some smooth stone, which I did go ahead and cook between streams. We have 11 ready to go. It requires some sapphire glass, which I don't think we have, but apparently I am mistaken. Uh, we do have it. And then finally, it requires one elite control circuit, which I also uh, do not believe we have. And I also don't think that we necessarily have what it takes to make it. Never mind. We actually 100% do. Nice. So that chat should not be too difficult whatsoever. Do we have eight sawdust? We do not. So chat has pointed out that we can put sticks in the precision sawmill and they turn directly into sawdust. Perfect. All right. That is very nice indeed. So over here, we can go and craft up one of these. I also do think, chat, uh, that I might go ahead and uh, potentially craft some of these muffling upgrades. Steel dust, glass, and infused alloy. They are quite pricey, but they, re they reduce the noise generated by mechanism machines. The mechanism machines that we have right now are a little loud, especially when they're all running. And so it would be pretty nice if we could uh, maybe, you know, quiet them down just ever so slightly. Perfect. I don't know if you need more than one of these. Oh, no, you can... Okay, so you can put up to four, I guess, in each machine. Let me try something. So if we, for example, put the rest of our spruce wood into here, this is the default level of loudness. Oh, there we go. So it doesn't take effect until the next craft, but now it's basically silent with the four muffling upgrades in. Okay. I don't know. Okay, it's definitely a little quieter with two in. Not super quiet, but definitely a little bit quieter. All right. There are some machines like the uh, Purifying Factory and the Crusher especially that do get uh, get quite noisy. So I think I will put a few in there as well. And as we go forward, I might add more to that, um, you know, just to make everything uh, a little bit quieter for uh, my own sanity. But uh, nevertheless, chat. Let's head on through into the nether and see if we can't find our blaze spawner, which we know where it is. It's in our nether fortress. We've got it bookmarked and whatnot, so we should be able to get this fairly easily. 
And then we're going to bring it back and we're going to try and set up some kind of blaze killing system. Now, there are not really a ton of ways in this pack, to the best of my knowledge, to automatically kill mobs. But I think the best way that we have is from Dark Utilities. Dark Utilities adds um, a series of blocks called traps and different traps do different things. For example, the damage trap will damage mobs that touch it with magic damage. So what we could do is we could have a blaze spawner uh, that spawns blazes. Those blazes could then be pushed, uh, could then be moved via the use of vector plates, which are kind of like conveyor belts. They will push mobs in the direction uh, that they are facing. We'll go ahead and bookmark those. And then if we push those mobs into, example, for example, a damage trap, um, it would kill those mobs. Now, I don't think the damage trap will drop loot and I especially don't think it will drop experience. However, there is this guy over here, the player damage trap, which damages mobs that touch the player with player damage. Mobs killed with this will drop experience and loot. This works on two levels. Not only does it give us the blaze rods that we could, of course, use for crafting, but it also gives us uh, experience that we can use in our sewer to get the essence required uh, to make more of the process of binding. So here is our blaze spawner. All we should have to do is uh, right click, kill the uh, surrounding blazes. Try not to die in the process. And there are more there as well. Uh, but then at that point, we can go ahead and just pick this up like so. And then now when we go back to the overworld, we can place this down. We can shift right click the cardboard box off of the blaze spawner. And we will be left with a blaze spawner in the overworld that we can use to spawn basically as many blazes as we like. So I think, Chan, I'm going to build this. I think down beneath this room here, because we do have um, a little area where the uh, like dungeon chest was. Yeah, this little area right here. I said the dungeon chest was, it is still here. Uh, but I think what I'll probably do is just kind of dig maybe like into this wall and set up an area here to spawn the blazes in. I think that can work fairly well and shouldn't take too long given that we do have uh, this, uh, this hammer here. And so essentially, chat, all I'm thinking here is that we'll fill this area here with vector plates. We'll probably have the, uh, we'll probably push all of the mobs to like this center block right here, which is where we'll put the uh, player trap. So the player trap is a little bit more expensive than the uh, the non-player trap, uh, but it's still not too bad by the looks of it. Um, it does require phantom membrane. And uh, I believe for that, we have to not sleep for three days, which I've not done a good job of at the uh, the start of the, <laughs> of the stream here. But uh, if we don't sleep for three days, we should get some phantom spawning in, at which point um, we can then use that, hopefully get some phantom membrane and, and use that for the player trap. Uh, we also need some cyan dye, which is easy enough. We need a diamond sword and then three blank plates. These are made with basalt. I don't think that we can use the basalt from blue power, which is the basalt that we have. Yeah, no, this one here from Embellish Craft is the one that we need. Alas, we don't have much of it, although it might actually be in our dank storage. It is. Okay, we have 256. Okay, that is very nice. I believe I do have to smelt this. Uh, however, we now have a uh, advanced smelting factory, which can smelt that nice and quick. And then we can take that, craft it up like so. And that gets us the uh, the blank plates that are not only used for the damage trap, but they're also used uh, in the making of these vector plates as well. Uh, these do also require either slime balls or pink slime. I'm definitely going to use the slime balls because the pink slimes are significantly more expensive. Uh, it also requires some sugarcane, which thankfully uh, we do have due to our uh, fairly rudimentary sugarcane farm that we have outside. And so really, chat, I don't think this is going to be too difficult. Now, this right here, this is going to be uh, an issue because we don't currently have uh, enough storage in our refined storage system. And so I think real quick, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make quite a few of these vector plates. I'll go put these down. And then while we wait for the three nights to pass, I will, uh, I'll take a look at maybe making some 4K or maybe even 16K storage disks for our uh, disk drive here. So we stop running out of, uh, running out of space. I also, chat, would love actually real quick if we can. Oh, no, we don't have any wall. I was going to say I would love to um, get another elevator going so we could actually uh, like get down to the bottom floor without having to, you know, jump down like I'm doing right now. And so I think we'll also go and try and find some sheep and, uh, and see if we can get some more wool fairly soon here as well. Um, and actually, you know what? I know I'm doing a lot of uh, back and forth here, chat, but I think I will upgrade these vector plates because they're actually not too expensive. They're not terrible on their own. If I put these down, I'll show you how fast they are. You know, they do move fairly quickly, but you can upgrade them to uh, fast vector plates, 
with just some more sugar cane and some iron nuggets. And then from there, you can even, up, uh, even upgrade them to extreme vector plates with more sugar and gold nuggets, both of which we have in, uh, in quite large quantities right now. So I think upgrading these uh, wouldn't be a terrible idea, but it would speed up the, uh, the spawning process and uh, therefore eventually get us more XP and more blaze rods, which I think is always, uh, always good. All right. So boom, and I'll go ahead and spread these out. Boom. That's 24 of those. 24 is not quite going to be enough. Uh, and actually, I don't even know if we had enough to begin with, now that I think about it. Uh, 36. Our area is, what, 7 by 9? So we need 63, actually, with like a full stack of uh, vector plates. So real quick, I don't know how many more slime balls we have, but we can always head back to our slime biome, that being the uh, the swamp, if we, uh, if we need more. So that should do it. And then we'll upgrade all of those as well to uh, to fast. And we're actually ever so slightly uh, shy. I guess we only need, we need one less because one is for the uh, the player trap. And then we also need some gold nuggets. Gold, we have a little bit less of than iron, but I think we should still have uh, more than enough to, uh, to make this work. Nice. All right, I think 60 might be enough. Honestly, from, from my testing, blazes don't really spawn in like that wide of an area. If I put the blaze spawner in the middle, I don't think we're going to get really any blazes spawning in like the back left corner. That's not a great system in all honesty, but uh, I think it might be fine. And do you see, these are very fast at moving at moving mobs, which is, uh, which is real nice. So we're basically going to run these. You can shift as well, by the way, to not be moved while you're walking over them, which does make it a little bit nicer for us to... Uh, to place these down. I think I might actually just fill in these back corners to uh, to stop. So, so even if blazes do spawn here, they don't get, uh, or even if they would spawn here, they don't get stuck, right? And there we go. So now we're just gonna put our blaze spawner probably like right about here. Let them spawn in, let them get pushed forward to here. I'd love to make the front out of uh, dark glass, if we could. That would allow us to see in while the uh, the blazes are being spawned. And the dark glass, I don't know if this one actually, oh, this one does block light. This is actually not too bad. Previously, I think we made the dark glass from dark utilities, which is definitely more expensive, but the one from glass essential is much easier. It's just glass and and charcoal, and it does say it blocks light. So I assume it's uh, it's probably definitely worth it for us to go with that instead of the uh, the standard. I'll leave a little gap now, so like there, so we can go in and actually get some work done. Uh, you know, putting the blaze spawner down and whatnot. But uh, but for now, that's uh, totally fine. And uh, let's also, I guess, grab our sewer. Another thing that I did learn between streams is that uh, the sewer does not. Uh, please, can we not sleep for a while? Need phantoms. Uh, the sewer does not actually require power, I don't believe. I have been powering it over here, but I don't think it's actually using power to do anything. I'm pretty sure that it uh, still collects the essence, even if it does not have power. It might not collect the sewer, maybe, I'm actually not too sure. Um, rhyme not intended, but it definitely doesn't connect. Uh, collect the... It definitely does collect the essence still, which is really all that we're after. So while we wait for three days to pass, while we wait for our phantoms to uh, to arrive, let's see if we can't upgrade our storage here a little bit and try and get some more space. So if we wanted to make a, a higher tier disc, maybe like a 16K disc, we'd need quite a bit of, um, of silicon. The other parts of this are not too bad. We do still have quite a few processor bindings. And uh, now that we've got so much more oil, uh, getting more processor bindings shouldn't be difficult, especially as well given uh, that by the end of today's stream, we should hopefully have um, a basically infinite source of, of essence. And speaking of essence, let me quickly go through this uh, this sewer down under our blaze spawner. But uh, at, at this point, I'm, I'm less concerned about um, using our oil and using our essence because we, we, we have ways of getting a lot more of it much more easily now. So I'm pretty sure I can just put this underneath here and you can put a vector plate directly on top of that. So the mobs will move over, they'll land here, they'll be killed. They'll drop experience. I will put in the range add-on just in case the experience manages to go, uh, you know, a couple of blocks further away than we expect it to. 
And uh, we do also need to collect the items that the blaze spawners, uh, the blazers drop when they die, but we'll get to that um, as and when the time comes. I do have a plan ready. Uh, for now, though, back over here, I think we should be able to make potentially like a 16k drive, which compared to the 7k we currently have, um, is going to be a nice boom to the amount of storage that we uh, currently possess. So let me bookmark this. And then for it, we need, I guess, nine 1k storage parts. How much silicon do we have? We have two silicon. Okay. In that case, then, chat, we need to get some sand and some coal going in the alloy smelter to get some more uh, silicon balls that we can turn into silicon that we can then use in our dissolution chamber with some of our lava uh, to try and get a bunch more silicon going. Other than the silicon, I think we're actually probably doing fine. How much quartz in which iron do we have? We have 21, and um, I don't think we're going to need that much. Yeah, no, it, doesn't look like, it doesn't look like we're going to need that much at all. We do also need quite a few of these uh, processes, but again, those require silicon, so we have to wait until we have uh, more silicon to actually get those going. But thankfully, the silicon is not too bad. Now, in the interest of speed, we did also previously look a little bit at getting some of the speed upgrades for the dissolution chamber, that being the speed tier 1 add-on and the speed tier 2 add-on. These are made with latex, redstone, glass panes, gold gears, and sugar, which kind of seems very doable, Chet. If we grab a plastic sheet and, and quickly go and throw that into uh, a pool of water, we can get our first bucket of latex. I might even go with the, uh, the, the tier 2 speed upgrade as well, simply because the dissolution chamber is uh, a block that we're going to be using so much of in this pack. But if we just do this, this, and this, we can grab that latex, which I swear has changed color uh, a few times now. It used to be uh, white, now it's blue. Redstone. I believe I have glass panes, or at least the glass to make glass panes. And then gold gears should be uh, easy enough. Two of those, and of course, two sugar, which we definitely do have. And I think, Chad, that should be everything for this uh, tier one speed add-on. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, bookmark both of those here. The tier two one is exactly the same, but with diamond gears, which again, really, I don't think shouldn't be too difficult for us. We do have quite a few diamonds. I don't know if it's necessarily worth it just yet, but we could always uh, see how this one goes and then maybe uh, add it later. Uh, it would appear, chat, that we do not have the power for this. 12,000 RF. That is interesting. Do you not have... You are full on power. So this should this can hold 10,000. I'm surprised, actually, that we uh, that we didn't have enough there. Like, I, I don't know what... Are these guys, like, sucking power constantly? Like, what's going on here? The power... <laughs> the power seems to, like, get to here. Like, it, that, that one's full, and then these ones are empty. That is very odd. Like, maybe these energizing rods? I don't know if they're bugged or if they're just kind of like... Or if the, the cable was bugged in some way. But either way, this looks like it has now worked, which is great. Uh, so we can throw that just, like, right back in over... You can't use it on this machine? Alas, it would appear that you cannot use this uh, this add-on with this machine. I'm not quite sure what add-ons you could put here. I do kind of wish there was, like, a, a tooltip or something that would tell you what you could use it on. Either way, we can save that for later. Maybe it'll come in useful. Um, I assume any machine that has um, one of those, like, process bars. I'll show you what I mean. Like, the sewer definitely has one down here. Over here, this machine has this, the uh, the progress bar. I assume any machine that has one of these will be able to to retrieve, uh, or to be able, will be able to hold a speed add-on. Alas, the dissolution chamber is not one of those machines. So... It looks like we can't speed this up, but either way, we can go ahead and uh, make some more silicon. So the silicon was simply lava and silicon wafers. So we'll throw in the silicon wafers. Uh, again, we'll throw our hopper back down to make that a little bit faster. I think we should have enough power to basically uh, just leave this going. Uh, now, I think, okay, what we want to do here is we want to put in the lava and then put all of, at least put in a little bit of the lava and then put all of the silicon in up here. That way, it's only going to put one in at a time. Perfect. And at that point, we can then begin filling this with uh, with even more lava to allow it to start making even more silicon. Let's start by crafting the nine of these. Those are the uh, the easiest part. Perfect. 
From there, we want to craft those into three 4K storage parts. Uh, so for that, we need 12 of these, which is really where the uh, the cost of the processor binding starts to uh, starts to come into full focus because those processor bindings are not the cheapest, and we do need quite a lot of them here. But there we go. We're going to smelt all of you up, nice and quick. From there, we also need four gold processors, aka improved processors. So we'll get those as well. Throw those through the old uh, advanced smelting factory, and that should, I think, be pretty much everything it need, uh, everything we need here. So I'll make three of you, one, two, three, and then make one of you, and then boom, nice. All right, so we have more than doubled our available storage, and so thus should now be able uh, to throw basically all of this stuff uh, into here uh, without having to worry too much about uh, about filling up our drive, at least for the time being, which is very nice indeed. But now that we have more storage chat, and again, whilst we wait for that uh, phantom to spawn in, let me uh, finally get around to something that I've not been doing for a little bit here, and that's making the uh, anchor upgrade for our digital miner, because right now our digital miner is sat in the nether, basically not doing anything. I think we do have one blaze powder. We do have six blaze rods. Beautiful. So let's do you. Uh, let's get a dielectric casing. Let's also go ahead and grab, I think we already have a tiny capacitor lying around. We do not. That's fine. We should be able to make one, I think, fairly easily. And then, of course, we'll throw all those into our energizing orb. Which should hopefully, nice and quickly, turn that into the uh, the ender core, at which point we can then craft up our anchor upgrade and then go and throw that into our digital miner, which will uh, allow that miner to keep going basically no matter where it is. For now, of course, we're going to use it because it's in the nether, but eventually, as we mine more and more in the overworld, we are going to have to move our digital miner further and further away. And so eventually, we're going to get to a point where even in the overworld, the digital miner is too far away to be loaded, like just passively by us. And we are going to have to chunk load it as well. So it's definitely worth getting this, I think, sooner rather than later. And on top of that, chat, given that we are sending the power here wirelessly, and we do have more than um, 9.4 redstone flux, that's how much it's using right now. It's using 9.48 redstone flux per tick. Uh, given that we do have that, we could probably put like eight speed upgrades into this digital miner and really start to uh, to speed up the mining, which I think is definitely going to be needed as we as we move forward. As I was saying a minute ago to the uh, the Twitch chat, we um, if we're going to get more things from refined storage, we need more tungsten to make those uh, machine casing. And if we're going to get more tungsten, we have to start mining much much faster because the tungsten ore is quite rare, and and so we're going to have to do like many many you know runs of the digital miner if we're going to get quite a large amount of the stuff. So let's see speed. Upgrade. I think it should be fairly easy for us to make more of these. It is. Uh, I would like more than four if we can. Do we have any uh, upgrades lying around? We do, actually. Never mind. We have four or five even in the system. And, of course, if this does require too much power, we can always go ahead and, uh, and make a few more energy upgrades for our digital miner as well. But I don't really think it's going to be necessary. I don't think it's going to be using a crazy amount of power. So it looks like eight speed upgrades might be a bit too much. Even five at 2,000? That really jumps up quite quickly, eh? Three <laughs> might also be pushing it. Maybe like two. That is strange. So with no speed upgrades, it requires... Oh, it's gone to 166 now. I have no idea what the uh, the difference is there. Either way, this is now done. We have quite a bit of nether quartz as well as a little bit of crimson iron. And so I guess, chat, at this point in time, we can, uh, we can go ahead and move this back to the overworld. So I believe this is night two right here of uh, of not sleeping. So I think we have one more night to go after this. Is this our... Uh, I think this is our new digital miner area, isn't it? Hello, my friends. Do we have armor? We do. We also have jetpacks. Uh, we can lower that to like 65 even then that might be like higher than it needs to be 
Zero to 65, radius 32. That's all good. We didn't finish this one chat, which is why I'm putting it back down again. And stop. So that is using 207 with one speed upgrade. Let's add like another one. 369. I think I'll leave it at 369 for now. It's not going to be crazy fast, but it's going to be a little bit faster and we don't have a ton of power at the moment. But I think chat, that should be okay. So a little bit of shearing later chat and we do now have uh, some wool. And thus finally, we can grab an ender pearl here and uh, craft up another elevator. Um, I think, I'm hoping that this elevator is okay because this room below us is, uh, is quite small. Oh, it's, n is it okay? Yeah, it's fine. It's like right it's right on the edge of being okay. So we're going to have to move this chest, which is fine. We can pick up all of this stuff here. And then we're going to have to put the elevator directly beneath this chest. I don't know if there's a block limit in this pack on how far the elevators can go, but I'm hoping that we can... Oh, we can. Perfect. So we can go directly from the top floor, or the main floor, I should say, down to this area without having to go through the strainer room, which is very nice. And uh, it should make getting to our blaze rods a little easier going forward. So I did mention earlier that we do have to collect the items that drop. And uh, while we wait for one more day to pass here, so we can actually get the uh, the phantoms to spawn, which hopefully we can get a member in from. Um, I believe we do have a, uh, a vacuum collector, uh, aka the ender hopper here, which vacuums up nearby items and puts them into an inventory. So this is five obsidian, one hopper, and then one eye of ender. How are we doing on ender pearls? We have two left. It's probably getting close to the time chat where we should go and check on our villager upstairs and make sure that he's still hanging about and uh, and uh, capable of giving us ender pearls. But essentially, all we do uh, here is if we quickly grab some uh, planks and make a chest. And uh, in fact, do we not have a gold chest in here? We don't, but we can grab one of these, I guess, actually. And uh, essentially, all you have to do with this is uh, place down the chest, which for now I'll do like right here. It's off center, but we'll probably have a tank here with all the essence in pulled from the uh, the sewer. And then all you have to do is place this on one of the sides of the gold chest, for example, like that. And now any items that are dropped nearby will be sucked up by the ender hopper and placed into the chest. Nice. And so that should collect all of the uh, the blaze rods that are dropped by the blaze and deposit them in there. I think it has a five by five radius by default. So like uh, one, two, three, four, five, I guess. Like, is it going to pick up here? It is nice. It's got a pretty large radius. But it's not going to pick up, like, over there. Yeah. But that's fine. The blazes are almost certainly all going to drop their wares uh, pretty much within, like, five blocks of this. They should basically all drop them right here. Uh, the odd blaze rod might go a bit further away, but even then, I think these vector plates do move items. They do, yeah. So all the items should end up right next to this guy and thus should be collected nice and easily. I'm thinking, chat, that I might start destroying the diesel that we're generating here because we have four tanks of diesel. And I think for all intents and purposes, this diesel is, is kind of useless for us. We can run it through a diesel generator to make power, but I don't think we really need to. And I think it's slowing down our uh, plastic production, trying to keep the diesel. So I think if we just make a liquid trash can and just send that diesel into it, I think that's going to be fine. The only thing we can use the diesel for is for making more power. And I don't even think the diesel generator makes that much power, right? Like it makes a little bit of power, but it's more expensive to make than the wind turbines. And so although we could make it just for the sake of using the diesel, we would be making it just to use the diesel when we could just make wind turbines cheaper and, uh, and get what we need, right? So I think I'm going to put this guy right here. And then it's already set to, uh, to insert diesel. So all the diesel should just be taken out of here and pumped into the, the fluid trash can. That should keep our ethane moving and should keep the amount of plastic pellets that we're getting uh, on the rise as well. So we're currently waiting for our 700th day to try and get uh, phantoms to spawn. And uh, one thing that has come uh, become apparent is that during the evenings, our lack of a door becomes a slight problem. However, what we can do is if we get ourselves two eyes of ender here, we can craft some of this uh, ethereal glass which is uh, not solid to players, but is solid to mobs. So, if we do something like this, 
we can walk right through this, but mobs cannot walk in, which is real nice. And I think we could probably also do a similar thing down here. Obviously, this looks terrible, and we could maybe move it in the future. Uh, but for the most part... No! What is going on? No! I'm fine. What the heck was that? Getting just thrown around by vector plates. Chat, we've got it. We got a phantom membrane. We have done it. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right. That took us way too long. But now that we have it, we do need to craft up. We need to find a desert. Now that we have it, we're one step closer towards being able to make this player trap. We do need cyan dye. And uh, if we're going to make that cyan dye, we're going to need some green dye. Which means we're going to need a cactus. So I believe, chat, that we now progress on to the desert finding portion of today's stream. Chat. 17 trillion blocks away from home. But here we are. So, now that we have our cactus, we can go ahead and uh, smelt a piece of that up to get us the green dye. We can combine that green dye up with some of our pre-existing blue dye to get cyan, and then we can finally craft up three of these player damage traps, which for now, we're gonna go and place in here. So we're gonna place it, we're gonna hold shift so we can get in here. We're gonna get rid of this and we're gonna place the damage trap right there. So now any mob that lands on there should take damage um, as damage would be inflicted by a player and therefore should drop experience and blaze rods. Over here, we can grab our cardboard box that has been uh, long housing our blaze spawner. Back in here, we can get rid of this. We can put the cardboard box down right about there. We can shift right click to remove it. The blazers should spawn in. Hopefully somewhat soon. And then hopefully we'll see those blazers push forward. Get pushed forward by the uh, the old vector plates. I kind of want that uh, cardboard box back. It was a bit pricey. But uh, well, we should see them get pushed forward by the vector plate. There we go. It's too fast, chat. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the vector plates are too quick. What in the world? Also, I think I might put some uh, blocks, like some cobblestone or something, above the, uh, the spawner, just so that they spawn like at the sides and not on the top. Like this guy, the rest of them kind of slowly lower themselves down and get trapped on the, the block there. But like this guy... I mean, it does work, <laughs> but it seems like we're needlessly increasing the, the risk that our, um, that our blaze wads don't end up in, in here. But we are getting blaze wads, which is good. And, and down here, we should be getting experience or essence even. We are indeed, which is, uh, which is perfect. So if we go and grab like some mechanical pipes and uh, another tank, we can start storing that uh, that essence for use in uh, the making of uh, bindings later on down the line, which uh, is going to make making those bindings a lot uh, a lot easier. So I think we'll just have you right about there, and then we'll just have this run up like that. And I think all we really have to do is make sure that the uh, the back of this is set to uh, and it might be the front actually is set to push. It is the front. Okay, and there we go. Nice. I'm not going to lie, it is entirely impractical, but I kind of like it. One, two, three, four, five. So the whole front row here is within range of the uh, ender hopper. And the range for this guy is already pretty massive. So I don't think we have any, I don't think there's any chance that uh, like the blaze wads don't drop 
in an area that the Ender Hopper can collect them in. And I also don't think there's any chance that the experience drops in an area where the sewer can't collect it. So I think we can just now sit back, collect the blaze rods, collect the essence, and use those as when we want to to uh to crash. <laughs> 